Hey everybody, welcome back. Have you been looking for a grain meal? Well, um, as most of you know, I have a Corona style grain meal, a little hand crank, and that little booger will absolutely chew through some corn. I made an attachment for my drill, turned it into an electric. I made a little shoot for it. I did several videos about it and it's a great little grinder. Um, but I need something bigger and that's mainly because on Still in the Clear, we offer different grain kits and I've got to be able to grind more grain than just enough for me to make a few batches, you know. So I ordered this grain meal uh, off of Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the show notes. And I was surprised to find out just how many different styles of grain meal there are that just look exactly like this one that don't have certain features that are more powerful than others and uh, it can be a little tricky so I thought I could distill that information down for you if you're looking for an electric grain mill of this size and we're gonna run it through the ringer we're gonna see how well it will grind say a whole corn and we'll see how how well it does how fast it does and yeah so I'm going to unbox this thing and uh, we're going to see what kind of a pain in the butt it is to put together because obviously there's uh, some assembly required. Come on. Okay, so after opening up the box, I was a little disappointed that there's not any instructions. Did get this little piece of paper here, which is basically, uh, you know, safety requirements, maintenance, and a sort of troubleshooting guide, but um, it also says, please read the manual before starting, but there's no manual. There's no uh, instructions on how to put this together. We've got two stands and we had a bag full of nuts and bolts. Uh, this, whatever that's for. This, which is uh, what the hopper attaches to and then that's going to attach here so luckily this is not too complex i think i can figure out how to get it together got these little rubber deals that i'm sure go on the feet so no no uh instructions assembly instructions and another thing i'm disappointed about is there's no on off switch and i specifically looked for uh the ones that had on off switches because I had seen some that didn't have an on off switch where you know you plug it in and it's on and I preferred to have a switch and the the image that was on uh, this product had an on off switch so I assumed that's what I was getting I didn't get that not a terrible deal for me I will manually install an on off switch on this cord so you know, I might even, uh, since I've got to put a switch on it anyway, I might do a rheostat so that I can control the speed of the motor. Might be something I choose to do. And then uh, there are, this is the adjustment. And I'll figure out how all that works once I get this thing assembled. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing assembled and be right back. I'm back. And that took me about 10 minutes. Um, there's four bolts on to mount these legs and then there's a bar with two bolts that go between them to stabilize them you got these four rubber feet to put on and then you've got this um we're going to call this a manifold right here to put on with four bolts now this piece i know what it is now it acts like a uh, little gate valve to allow the grain to come in. You can open it or close it with just this. Uh, you know, I'm sure I'm sure it'll work fine. It's a little chintzy, but okay. But um, that's not really what I'm disappointed about. What I am disappointed about is no instructions um, and not enough parts. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take these four little bolts out real quick. Um, just to show you, I didn't even have these uh, tightened down all the way. I just kind of threaded them in to show you where this sat. Um, but anyway, so this hopper has three holes in it that require bolts and nuts to line up with the three holes in this manifold. And once I had everything put together, I had one bolt left that would fit in those holes 
and I had two nuts left that don't fit that bolt. And, uh, you know, they fit the bolts that go here and they fit this uh, threaded shaft for stabilizing here. In fact, they may go on the inside here and here. I'll probably put them there. Uh, but I need three bolts and three nuts to put the hopper onto the uh, manifold. And I all I have is one bolt and no nuts. So I'm a little disappointed uh, at this point. I would say this, I don't know how well this thing runs yet. So uh, we still have some testing to do. But at this point, if you're not a, a kind of a handy person, I'm not sure I can recommend this to you. So, um, you know, these cheap Chinese grain mills, I'm, I'm plenty handy. And so it's no big deal for me to run down, get some nuts and some bolts. And, you know, I'm going to install my own switch on here. No big deal. Uh, but if you're, you know, maybe you are the type of person that needs things uh, delivered, ready to go, simple, you know, maybe putting these late, putting these feet on, not that big a deal, but trying to modify things because they didn't come with the right parts would be a big deal. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. I'm going to go get the parts and then tomorrow I'll finish uh, putting this together and we'll do the testing. All right, I'm back and I went to the hardware store. I got all the bolts that I needed. I got all the stuff I needed to make a switch. And, you know, in the last part of the video, I said I was going to do that the next day. Well, it's been weeks. I finally got back to it. But anyway, I'm on it now. And um, so everything is all put together. And now I'm going to do the switch. I'll go over the parts. I got an extension cord. This is just a cheap 25 foot extension cord. And the reason I got that is because this cord looks to be about four to six feet long. Uh, just not long enough for me, what I want. So I'm going to be adding this switch anyway. So this cord is going to get wired into a switch. And then I'm going to cut this to a length that I want, maybe 10 feet and um, wire that into the switch. And that way I have plenty of cord and I've got an on off switch. Now this is the switch, the switch plate. I've got, um, these are some number 10, three quarter inch self tapping screws so I can attach the box right to the metal, not have to drill any holes or anything like that. These, these screws will drill the hole itself also. I also got a couple of UF connectors, half inch UF connectors to put in the box so that my electrical cord isn't uh, vibrating against the metal eventually someday, uh, vibrating through the insulation causing a hazard. So that's that. One thing I want to talk about before I get into putting this switch on is uh, the adjustment. So there was no instructions with how to operate this thing, which was a bit of a disappointment, but not, not a terribly big deal. So this, this, uh, hand bolt is an adjustment. So you've got two grinding plates right here. This it's spring loaded. And, um, as you tighten this down, it pushes this plate closer to the other plate. So you're getting a finer grain and or a finer mill and as you back it off uh, of course it's backing out making a bigger space between the two grinding plates for a more coarse mill one thing to mention this ball bearing actually is just sitting in place it's greased and so it's kind of hold, held there by the grease but it'll fall right out the first time i opened this it just kind of fell right out not a big deal just clean it off put it back in um you can tighten this down so much that you're grinding metal against metal on the plates, which is, uh, you know, you want to be careful not to do that because obviously you don't want metal shavings uh, in your cornmeal or whatever, you know, whatever you're grinding. So my recommendation is tighten it all the way down until you can't tighten it anymore. Now you know you're metal against metal on those plates. Then back it off a little set this uh, backing this is just another nut you tighten it up against that one and that during operation when the machine is vibrating it's not going to loosen itself off because of this backup nut so uh, that's that now i'm gonna go ahead and get started 
on putting this switch in and I'm going to shift the camera around so you guys can have a better view and see how I do that. You know, a lot of you are already going to know how to do this and you're not going to need to see it. And some of you, maybe you want to see how I do it. So I'm going to show you. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is install this box and I'm just going to eyeball it right here. Um, and I'm going to put a couple of marks with my Sharpie where I'm going to put these screws. good and snug and I'm just going to be cutting this off because I'm not going to need it because I got that extension cord so I just need enough to go in here and then wire to the switch so for now I'm going to cut it off about right there Get this good and snug. It's time to add the other cord. This is the cord that will plug into the wall. And um, this is a 25 foot cord. I think I'll just take half of it. So it'll be like 12 foot. Hopefully this will go in there. It's kind of a tight fit. Yeah. All right, nice and snug. So there's no vibration that's going to cause us some problems. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to wire up the neutral leg to the switch. And that's going to be the white wire in both of these. So from this cord, the cord coming from the supply of power, I'm going to put it in the bottom here. And then on this cord, I'm going to put the common here or the white wire here and then the other two wires the black and the green will just be wired together uh, for themselves and for all you sparkies out there be sure and put in the comments all the ways you think I'm doing this wrong I certainly like it when like, I'm not a professional electrician, but I like it when I'm coached by professionals. So drop your comments in there. Let me know if I'm screwing this up, if I'm doing a good job, if it's good enough to work. Like, for me, it's always, you know, am I going to, am I going to blow something up or is it going to work all right? As long as it's going to work all right, I'm usually okay. So we'll get these separated. I'm going to switch the neutral wires. And that's these white wires. You can also switch the hot wires, which are the black ones. I mean, as far as I know, it works either way. There may be a right and a wrong way. I'm going to strip these ground wires, the green ones, extra long because I'm also going to attach those to 
the switch because the switch has a little ground screw on it this green one right here and this white one's going to go here this white one's going to go here and the black is just going to be tied together tucked in the back so the first thing i'm going to do is wind these up together Make a good tight strand here. And then we'll connect it here. Like so. power side, supply side coming in on the bottom of the switch. And the load side coming in on the top of the switch. Load side being the, uh, the motor. with that one it's going to be fine and then these two are just going to connect together with a wire nut just like so tuck that into the back out of the way And this is going to go like so. And I'll plug this in and test it just to make sure before I throw that cover on. There you have it. Everything is put together. Everything is ready to test. Um, one good thing about the design is that this five gallon bucket sits under it nicely with the nozzle, uh, you know, the outlet nozzle below the top. So, you know, that's gonna minimize some of the cleanup. It's still gonna get really dusty. And in the future, I will probably set this up outdoors um, just to avoid the cleanup uh, inside so I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust this first to the mill that I want the you know fine versus coarse this is just straight whole corn feed uh, from Atwoods you know a local farm supply I'm, I'm gonna test it on whole corn and uh, let's see how it does gotta open the gate Okay, so right away, a lot of dust coming out right here uh, where, the, where the door closes for the two mill plates. Uh, that, you know, maybe if I can find the right kind of O-ring or something like that, just some massive O-ring, maybe I can set a, uh, take care of some of that. Or an easy fix is just going to be to drape a towel over this part. So... And I think I'm going to make this a little bit finer. That's pretty good right there. Um, and it did quite a bit pretty quick. I'm going to back this off so that I can tighten this up a little more. Oh, let's see.
that's pretty nice. Uh, that's about as fine as I can get it. I did kind of hear it start to hit metal. So now I'm going to mill this whole bag and I just want to see how long it takes. How much more efficient is it going to be? And this is a 40 pound bag. So we'll time it. We'll add, you know, 90 seconds for, for what I just did right there. And I am also going to put, I've got this sweatshirt. Uh, I'm going to drape it over it uh, just to, for the dust. I don't have a towel, but I'm just going to drape that like that just to help keep down the dust a little bit because it's uh, pretty rough. <laughs> it's, I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but it's really uh, dusty in here. <laughs> Okay, so that was 40 pounds um, in six minutes. And it's not a completely fair test because I didn't realize it, but for a good portion of the time during that first bucket, almost the entire time, uh, I had this gate valve, I had this gate almost halfway closed. And so it wasn't feeding as fast as it could have been. So six minutes for 40 pounds, uh, just for the math, I'm going to say it would have been easy to do it in five minutes probably a little bit less. So 40 pounds every five minutes. And there's what, 12, five minutes in an hour uh, times 40. So 480 pounds of whole corn in an hour. Uh, that's not shabby at all. That's, that's a pretty good, uh, that's pretty impressive. So uh, I'm real happy with the switch. Definitely suggest putting a switch on if you don't get one that has a switch already on it. Um, yeah, I like the idea of just being able to turn that thing on and off rather than having to, you know, get under the table, unplug it to turn it off. And then when you plug it in, it just starts going while you're still under the table. Just not a great idea. But functionally, it seems to function really well. Now, how long is it going to last? I don't know yet. Uh, so, you know, maybe I'll do another video in a year to let you guys know, hey, it's been a year with this machine. Uh, it's doing great. Or I've already bought another one or something. I don't know. But um, anyway, I, I, I stand with what I said earlier. If you're handy enough to kind of do these improvements yourself and, you know, it's OK that it didn't come with instructions and all that, then I think this is probably going to be a pretty good machine for the money. Um, if you need things to come ready to go out of the box with clear instructions. Um, you know, maybe this isn't the one for you, uh, but I like it so far and I'll keep you updated on it.